Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we're going to talk about the effects of dead time. The effects on stability. I already mentioned several times, I think, also really several times, that dead time is a very bad thing. And today I want us to understand why. Okay? So remember this, this picture from, La, from the Nyquist criteria. Yeah? We said, okay, there is the Nyquist point and this Nyquist point. This is somehow, if we stay inside this Nyquist point, then we are a stable system. If we are surrounding this Nyquist point, like the red line there, then we have an instable system. We can also see it in the Bode plot. And we have defined here some, some uh, border cases or some reserves, yeah, amplitude reserves and, and phase reserves and so on. Yeah. And we said, yeah, we should stay away there. Yeah. The reason we know. And we also did once this. Uh, this is when I explained the, the Nyquist plot. Uh, polar plot, Nyquist plot. This was a PT1 element. Okay? And I want to show you how a PT1 element is affected by a dead time. Okay? I will do this on my computer here. Yeah? So here we have this polar plot of a PT1 element. Yeah? Here we have the polar plot on the right hand side. Uh, here we have the values, so it's actually exactly the same, the same thing which we have used here. Yeah? So there's K3 and T0.1 seconds. And this is how this would look like. And the according, the according uh, Nucleus plot is looking like this. Huh? Also exactly like we have drawn it here. Huh? We can we can change something in here. Yeah? If we change k to 5, let's say, then we see we shift it up simply. Yeah? In the Bode plot, we shift it up. In the Nyquist plot, we make this circle, this half circle, what is representing a uh, um, PT1 element in the, in the Nyquist plot, a little bit bigger, yeah? scaled simply. Yeah? It's just scaled, scale factor. Yeah? If we have it at 1, we will shift it down, and also here, this is now really tiny. Huh? Let's go back to 3, huh? and see what is happening if we are changing... Oh, moving really wild... <laughs> if we are changing T, yeah? let's say we are using 1, you see, we just changing the position of the band. Okay, that's it. In the Bode plot, nothing is changing. And uh, in the Nyquist plot, nothing is changing. In the Bode plot, we are shifting, but in the Nyquist plot, it's just where the omegas are. Okay, now here is now 1. Before it was 10. Uh, but that's, every, that's all. Uh, if we even go further, uh, 100, ah, 1000, why not? Then we are really left here and the Nyquist plot still looks the same. However, okay, not really because here my, my, uh, I will not start at zero. I started a small value and this small value is already here. Yeah? And here we have 0 0.001 and not 1 or 10 anymore. So I will simply change this to a reasonable value, I will use 0 0.1 again, because this was simply the PT1 element we've used here. So this is, this is how this is looking. And now I'm going to add some dead time. Let's say I'm adding 0 0.1 seconds. Already quite an effect, right? Here, up here, in the, in the Bode plot, nothing much has changed. But down here in the phase diagram, 
Yeah? If we are also display the dead time element here and here, dead time element here is always one, and here the phase is simply added. Yeah? It's simply added, and you see the yellow line was what it was before, and the black line is what it is now. Okay? And also here, the yellow line is what it was before, and the black line is what it is now. You see the black line it moved a little bit. Yeah? There is a little point for whatever reason at the end. Okay? Why is it moving? Because it's simply adding, adding phase. Here at the band frequency, at the, at the characteristic frequency, the cutoff frequency of the PT1 element, 10, yeah, which was before here, we have not a phase anymore of 45 degree, but a little bit more. So this point was shifted a little bit in this direction. Actually less, of course, because it's minus, but from, from the absolute value more. Huh? So it shifted to minus, I don't know, minus 47, yeah? shifted a little bit. Let's increase the dead time even more. Let's set it to one second. And here we see, aha, it really changed something. Here in the body plot, this is always the same. But here, yeah, now we are really pulling down our face. Yeah? And where we have got before minus 45, I am now at minus your 56 or something like this. So this point here was traveled, is, is traveling to here, somewhere here. Yeah, that this is 50, 56 degree. It's like if you would put in here a circle, take this point and move it with the same, because it's the same, same absolute value, okay? Same absolute value, but more, more angle simply, or from the absolute value of the angle, more, yeah? more negative. <laughs> so this point, this point is going there somewhere, this point is going there somewhere, and so on. And here in the middle you see, it looks like a pigtail, let's, let's call it pigtail. Yeah? Uh, it's because it's adding more and more and more and more and more uh, face, simply. Yeah? And you see, what is happening with the stability here the nucleus point with the PT1 element, it cannot be reached. Yeah? However, with additional data, you see this point now, now we have a phase reserve of uh, below 90 degree already, yeah? and an amplitude reserve, Ooh, this is somewhere a 3, looks like 3 or something like this. Yeah? Amplitude reserve is already pretty close. Yeah? Let's see what is at 2 happening. Whoa, still, really, you see here in the, in the nucleus plot, you see it pretty well. Here with this point where we are pinching the one line, this is now really moved to, the, to a higher phase. This is this point here. This point here, where we pinch the one line, crossover frequency, we go down and we are already at minus, where is this, here, here? Yeah, minus 135 or something like this. Yeah? So we are a little bit less. Yeah? So this fits together. Yeah? So two, but this is still stable. Yeah? Let's see, three, also still stable, but will swing quite a lot, I guess. Look at that, how close we are here at the Nyquist point already. Yeah? Four, book, we are beyond. In stable system. Now we finally manage to produce an instable system. We can go into extremes, let's say 10, yeah? and you see it's, it's just adding more and more and more and more. Yeah? It's twisting, simply twisting. Yeah? And you see the nucleus criteria also works. So 4 was this border, right? Yeah, 4, 3 was still okay, yeah? not 3.5. Three, three nine. Mm. Already pretty close. 
you see the nucleus calderae is also working in case of dead time elements. So here we are at 3.9 seconds dead time. This system would already get unstable. Instable, unstable, not stable. Okay. Yeah. So this is a PT1 system. Yeah. I told you dead times are bad. Even a PT1 system is not stable anymore if you have too much dead time. I will set up this uh, Excel sheet now also for a PT2 system. We can have a look how a PT2 system is reacting. Yeah. And yeah, maybe we see something if this is maybe even worse, yeah, because the PT2 system already has potential to swing. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so now I changed to a PT2 system. I also did a PT2 system with a natural frequency of around 10. Uh, so here, actually, it pretty much looks like the PT1 system, but the bands are now around this 10. Uh, at 10 seconds raised by the power of minus 1, we had first this one characteristic cutoff cut frequency of the PT1 element. Now we have one here, symmetrically to the 10 line, and one here. Uh, so these two bands, I have a relatively high damping of 4 of my PT2 element. And in the, in the nucleus spot it looks like this. Uh, currently, without any time delay. Uh, now let's add the time delay. Let's add 0.1 seconds. We see again here, okay, we do something. We add a little bit, or we add phase. Huh? In the nucleus plot, it doesn't really matter, as you see. Yeah? So it does not, it does not really look very, very much different, yeah? because simply it's that high. Yeah? That the values here are so small. You would see the difference quite here somewhere at the sm small values. It pretty much looks the same. Yeah? Let's do five. Or when, where was the? It was at four. I think the instability point before. Yeah? Here, this is not stable. But this is not instable at four. Yeah? So even if this PT two element is now already touching by itself here the second quadrant. Yeah? Because we are pinching the imaginary axis here with our original, our original system, yeah? it doesn't mean it's getting worse. Yeah? So this point is already to the left, so the original phase reserve was already less than with the PT1 system. Yeah? However, you see, even at the same delay time I add, it's there is a phase reserve of, of, of 90 degrees, above 90 degrees still. Yeah? Let's see if, if this is working that well. Let's see. 10. Oh, so not. Yeah. You see, there is a phase reserve now of, I guess, 60 degrees or something like this. This would even be a reasonable system. Yeah? So, before we were instable at 3.9, now at 10. Yeah? Let's see, 20. Still not 30. Ah, here we are. It's getting interesting. Here, here it seems like we are at the point where we are. This seems to be the border stability point. Around 30. Huh? 31. Oh, let's see, 35. Yeah, it's clear. Now we are clearly above. Huh? If you look at the nucleus point here. So 30 seems to be. This means, if something is reacting sensitive on the delay time or not, strongly depends on the system. Okay. It is not every system is, is getting every system is getting worse with delay time, but not as worse as an other system might be. Get some systems are more tolerant to dead times. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah. You see, this is how dead times are influencing. And we also see, hey, 
these diagrams here, those, those Bode plots, those Nyquist plots and so on, they seem to be a tool to, to look at a system and see if it's stable or not and, 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 and somehow guess how it is swinging or not. Or we should be able to design our control loop with the help of the Bode plot, right? This is exactly what we will do next video. Next video is about designing control loops in Bode plots. How we can do this? What is the typical approach? Will be explained in the next video. And the videos afterwards will deal with certain you know, receipts. But next video, basics about designing control loop in the Bode plot. For this time, Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.